Hey everyone, it's Friday the 10th of November and it's just coming up to 6.25 in the evening. Right, today's video we will be taking a look at some vintage Christmas lights that I picked up recently um, on the good old eBay. Uh, I've also got an update on the stolen bikes, an update on my workshop. Um, also, my moped had its MOT today, the Yamaha Jog did. The other one's still not till the 1st of December. Um, <clears throat> a barricade lamp, another one for the collection. Uh, and a traffic cone. Um, it was also my birthday yesterday. I've just turned 40 and look at this, I've still got black hair on top. <laughs> Still, I've got grey hair around here mostly. Um, but yeah, I can show you that it's natural black. I don't dye it or anything. I can't be bothered with all of that. Um, a personal achievement I made this week as well. Uh, and anything else I can think of. That's all I can think of at the minute, but no doubt as the video progresses I will think of something. Right, let's start with a stolen bike update. So. In short, I've got both bikes back. Very rare to actually get any stolen bike back. I mean, I've had quite a few stolen over the years and very, very rarely do I ever see them again. Um, so I think I was quite lucky these time, this time. Not that it really mattered. They weren't that valuable. Um, but still, um, it's quite weird because... Literally two nights after they got stolen, I believe, yeah, it was the night or the day after I bought that Claude Butler mountain bike, as I've shown in the last video, which is this one here, ready to be uploaded, which I'll start uploading in a bit. Um, yeah, I went downstairs, so I believe that was, a th yeah, it was a Thursday evening. I went downstairs, because I was going to go to Morrison's Daily, just around the corner, and there it sat, leaning up on the wall. It was the Dutch 3-speed that had been returned, with the pannier bags still attached. Nothing in the pannier bags, that had all disappeared, but there wasn't anything of any value in there anyway. Um, a cable bike lock, which I've already got like two of, so no great loss. Uh, a dead spark plug, a bicycle light bracket that I wasn't using, so eh, I don't even know where the light's gone for it. <laughs> I'll probably find the light now, won't I? Um, yeah, and just that's about it. Um, and then a couple of days after that, after I made an updated post on the North Walsham Notes Board and Discussion Group over on Facebook. Um, I get a DM on Sat the following Saturday after the Dutch 3 speed had been returned. I don't know how, who returned it or why it was returned, it just turned up. Anyway, I get a message on Facebook from a lady who's a member of the same group. She'd seen it on a walk and taken a photo of it. Um, the lady's racer that is, that was the one that was still missing. And told me where it was. And it was down a public footpath. I'd say I had to travel about a mile and a half and negotiate some steps because uh, the public footpath was a railway line many years ago, so it's now a disused railway line. Um, there's some bridges that were removed as well, so you have to go down some steps and up some steps, and yeah, it's a bit of a kerfuffle to uh, negotiate, but well worth the walk. But anyway, I chose to ride the new Claw Butler that I bought. Um, it's just easier. And the whole mission took me about an hour and 45 minutes. I think I left here about 2.36 and got back at 4.15ish. Might have been a bit later than that. Because obviously I rode there and had to walk all the way back. Not that I'm complaining, it did knack me out, but I'm not complaining. So I've got both bikes back. 
Um, and then a week later, I was at Mum's on a Sunday. I think it was a Sunday. Um, yeah, not Sunday, just gone. Not last Sunday, the Sunday before, I think. Something like that. Anyway, I was at Mum's. My stepdad was in the back garden talking to the neighbour and the neighbour mentioned that there was a bike for free. It had a big free sign stuck on it leaning up against a fence by the uh, village shop. So I took a walk around there and there it was and I rode it home. It was another lady's bicycle. Was a racer and I say was a racing bike because I'd swapped the handlebars. I didn't have the drop down handlebars on it anymore. Um, yeah, rode home fine. Gear levers were on, were on backwards. Whether they did that intentionally because they preferred it that way or if that was done just by a mistake, I don't know, but they were on backwards. They still worked, they were just on backwards. Therefore, the uh, gears worked in reverse. <laughs> but like I said, they worked. Uh, yeah, so, got all the bikes sitting over at Mum's. Um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. Cause it, it it's just a what I call a budget bike. You know, a very low-end, poor-quality bike, and it's made by Emel, Emel. But it was one of them brands, and I think some of these that I'm about to reel off still exist. You know, it's the same as Townsend, Universal, um, pretty much any other bike like that. Any low-end that you could, back in the day, you could buy them for less than a hundred quid. Basically, all they were were just the same bike from the same factory with a different name stuck on it. And they're all made with the cheapest, you know, off the floor parts, if you like. <laughs> they did the job for a little while, but when you put them out in the rain, that was it. Apollo is another one like that. I personally don't consider an Apollo bike a high end bike. That is a budget bike to me. Even if it is from Halfords, it's still what I consider just a, you know, a bottom of the basket budget bike. Some of them are all right. I have ridden some of these budget bikes that ride really, really nice. Um, in fact, I do have one in my collection. It's a, a Universal, if I remember correctly. Old, but in very good condition. Um, which is why I've kept it. That's actually what drew me to buying it in the first place. And I've had that a year, now, over a year now. Uh, yeah, so free bike. Free bike's a free bike. I can use bits or whatever off of it. Um, yeah, so what should we talk about next? Um, as I mentioned earlier, it was my birthday yesterday. My big 4 so I'm now 40. And to be honest, I didn't even expect to hit this age and still have this much black hair. I thought it was going to be a lot greyer than this. So that did surprise, pleasant surprise, but surprised me. Um, it was just a quiet day at home, really. Apparently they're planning something for the 16th. It was my sister's birthday is soon as well. I cannot remember what day she was born on. <laughs> it's bad, isn't it? I think it's actually I think it's actually tomorrow, the 12th. Um but our little brother is flying over from Ireland. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when, but we're gonna have some sort of get together on the 16th. So sort of celebrations and everything for both mine and my sister's birthday basically being saved until the 16th. Which is fine, I'm 40, I don't do fancy birthday celebrations. I don't feel I'm too old for it, I just don't feel like I want them anymore. <laughs> I'm just happy I had a quiet day at home, you know. You know, with plenty of birthday wishes on Facebook and whatnot, both through private message and on my timeline, so I'm happy with that. Uh, yeah, right. Shall we have a look at the 
traffic current I got for my collection. And then we'll go on to the barricade lights. So, this is one that it literally just cost me the shipping, that's it. So I've got this from a friend of mine on Facebook. You know, I've bought lamps from him before, I think that's the most recent one um, that he offered me. I've got another one up there, the Tildon Pilot 90i shoe in a video, a couple of videos ago now. But yeah, he contacted me again on Facebook and asked if I want this, just for the cost of shipping. So I said, yeah, why not? Because I haven't got one of this style in the collection. Well, I didn't. I do now. <laughs> and yes, it is meant to be heavier than this because it is meant to have sand in the bottom, but that's long gone. Um, and there is some cracking and damage. But, uh, yeah. But that's quite a nice coat. Still got the reflective sleeve on it. Yeah. Pardon me. A few other little cracks and dings in it, but I'm not worried about that. And this one will actually be stored up here with all the others. Because I've got two small stacks in the bedroom of cones that are made of this sort of plastic. For the reason being, they like to do that if you leave them outside in you know, temperatures that fluctuate, or if you leave them out in the weather, um, they can crack like that. And if you leave them out in direct sunlight, not only do they fade, they get very brittle. So for those reasons, I've kept all of my cones made out of this sort of plastic up here in the bedroom. They're stacked uh, neatly behind the model railway, you don't even know they're there. So that one's got to go with those. Now, barricade lamp. I actually bought one that I've already got one of. That's not uncommon for me to have multiple of the same lamps because there are some lamps that I really do love. If I see them for a cheap price I can't resist them. <laughs> anyway, that's not the reason I actually bought another one of these. So it's a Tildorn Pilot 360. Exactly the same base as the Pilot 90 I've got. Um, it's got gas written on it because this one was for the gas board. I don't think this would have been for British Gas or Transco back then. I think Transco, possibly. But um, I did buy this for a number of reasons. Um, I had seen it on eBay for quite some time. It'd been on there for at least a month, maybe, maybe two months actually. Um, and I kept thinking about it because it was only 13 quid. That was what the starting bid was 13 quid. Um, which I thought was actually quite a cheap start bid for this, because I'd seen these ones with the gas written on them sell for a lot more than that. Um, plus this one is cosmetically better than my other one. I'll show you the other one, because I've got it down here. That what I put this wire on just so I could hang it up in the cupboard. Well, I don't know if you could see that in this light. This sort of side is a lot more sort of sun bleached and faded than this bit. In fact, this bit's not as yellow as it should be either. Although the gas is clearer on it. And the sticker, the reflective sticker here is um, in a little bit worse shape than the one on there. This one's actually, it looks new. It looks like it's barely been used. That's the whole reason I actually just bought a second one. That, you know, if a new collector comes along in the future, you know, somebody that's just started out, wants to buy one of these lamps, you know, perhaps they're looking for in particular to add to their collection. I've got a spare one I can offer them. So, yeah, I've got a nice pair of those. And while we're on the subject of barricade lamps, I've got three on their way from Belgium. Yeah, I'm at the point with my collection where I believe I've actually got most of the UK lamps. Apart from some older paraffin lamps and, of course, the rarest hen's teeth lamps. Um, I mean, this one is quite rare. The Pilot 90 is quite a rare one, so I'm glad I got that. Um, so, I have sort of started to look abroad for other lamps and from other countries. I'd love some from America. But the postage is so steep, even for just one lamp, you know. But I've been looking for a lamp that I really, really, 
really would want in my collection, one that I'd really like the look of, just to make it worth it, you know, worth the postage in my mind. I don't want to pay all that shipping for a lamp that's just, eh, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, thankfully, postage from Europe um, isn't too bad. I mean, I got three lamps from this guy. He's on the um, Facebook groups I'm on. I think there's actually only three. For barricade lamp clicks, there might be some more out there, but I'm only on three. Um, I knew he was from Europe somewhere, but until I bought these lamps from him, I didn't know it was Belgium. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Bank transfer, but it's a guy I trust. You know, other members have traded with him and bought from him. You know, he's well known amongst the groups and amongst collectors. You know, he's been a friend on my Facebook for quite some time now, so... Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have done, you know, like a bank transfer or anything like that. But the total for the three lamps and the postage was just £52, which was 57 euros. Which I didn't think was too bad. Um, I think the shipping was like 15, 16, could have even been 18 quid. I can't remember what it was. I think it was closer to 18 quid. Which, in fairness, is only four or five quid more than what it would cost me to post a heavy box to Ireland through Parcel Force. Um, I mean, depending on the weight, it's varied because I've posted like five boxes to my brother over in Ireland. And depending on the size and weight would depend on the price. And it's been anywhere from like £14 something to as little as £11 something. Um, so yeah, I just... It didn't seem too much of a bother for me just to pay them that extra sort of four or five quid to get some lamps from Belgium. Something different, you know? I, mean, I, I don't even know how many lamps I've got in the collection now, not counting duplicates. And if I was going to do a tally up, I would not count the duplicates. So I'd only count one of those Tilda and Pilot 60s. If one was a flashing one, which are not, they're both steady burn, but if one was a flashing and one was a steady, then I would count them both. But as they're both identical, just count the one. I might actually have to go through them one day and just have a tally up, because I've seriously forgotten. Mopeds, we'll do them next. So, my little Yamaha Jog, um, its old MOT runs out today. <laughs> um, today would have been its last day, so after midnight tonight, it wouldn't have had an MOT. So, yesterday, my birthday, I went across to DRDs to book it in for an MOT, and they were actually able to do it today, so I dropped it off this morning. And I was actually quite pleased when I went to pick it up. There's a certificate. It's a pass. And there's no advisories. Which I like to see because it tells me, you know, that there's... Uh, um, that they didn't find anything that was wearing out and would need replacing in the future. You know, that it's got basically a clean bill of health. Oh, I've just seen who it was that did the OT and I actually know him. <laughs> and though it's not favouritism, I know of him but I don't know him personally. And he actually failed. He did my MOT last year and he did fail it. <laughs> um, I had to have a bulb and two tyres, actually. That's all I failed on last year. <clears throat> so, yeah. I'm quite happy with that. 
I've just got to find my um, wallet with all the other MOTs and the V5s in and whatnot because I've got another V5 down here to add to it. But I've lost the wallet. I put it up somewhere so safe that I can't find it. I've got to stop doing that because that's the second thing that I've put up safe recently that I've lost. <laughs> Pardon me. Uh, is that the empty can? Yeah. Put that down there with the other side. That way up. Right. Um. Oh yeah, and the leeway. That, because I've got the V5 for that now, that was actually registered on the 1st of December 2020. Pardon me. Which will explain why, when I bought it, the um, advert did say that the MOT was due in December. Um, I know that's not going to pass an MOT, because the brake light switch on the rear brake doesn't work. So I've got no rear brake. And I can only start it with the start motor on the front brake. Because obviously the switch don't work on the rear. I've ordered one. I just hope it's going to fit. If not, I'm going to be ordering another one. <laughs> um, and the other problem that actually developed when I last rode it was a sticky throttle. What they call a dead man's throttle, you know. Because when you let go of the twist throttle, it's meant to go back to its idle position automatically it's not meant to stay there mine was staying there um, and yesterday I actually found out what it was and it was nothing to do with the throttle actually I thought maybe the cable just needed a bit of oil down it because it still moved a little I, usually if a cable same with a brake cable or anything like that you'll know if it needs oil because you'll feel it it won't be a nice smooth movement when you you know put on the brake lever or whatever but this was still quite smooth, so it was confusing me. I already had the throttle assembly apart as best I could just to squirt some oil in there, and that didn't work. So yesterday I thought, I'll take that end, I don't know what you'd actually call it, it's like a, a stub. It's about that long, it screws onto the end of the handlebar. I suppose they put them on there just to protect the handlebar a bit in case it falls over. Anyway, I start taking that off and realised it was bent and I thought I bet that got bent when that head fell over at Sainsbury's petrol station when I'd last filled it up and I thought but it, the throttle hasn't actually stuck until recently and then I thought I wonder if that is causing the problem so I unscrewed it twisted on the throttle and it went back as it should, it worked as it should, and I thought, so that is causing the problem because it's bent. I think what has happened because it didn't start sticking the day that the bike dropped and obviously bent that little protector over. I bet that last day when I rode up from Mum's, it got rotated somehow and then just started causing drag on the twist grip, and that's why it wouldn't retract properly and would when I undid it. <laughs> so I don't know, it's unscrewed at the moment just enough so the throttle works because I was actually going to ride it over to Mum's the next time I rode it and uh, see if I could just straighten that out because I'd rather not take it off, I'd just rather leave it on there. Um, yeah, but I think you know, I've given the bike a look over and the brake light switch is the only issue. Rear brake felt like there was a lot of play in the lever, but then I looked at the adjustment at the back wheel, and that looks like it's never been adjusted. So I just turned the thing in a bit. <laughs> um, so I think brakes are going to be totally fine on that as well. And weather permitting, I should be over at Mum's tomorrow because we've got some stuff to sort out where my stepdad's been changing his um, workshop in a model railway room there's a load of stuff outside it's taken up a load of room it's getting soaked and ruined so we need to get that sorted and space cleared some of it's going to go up in the top shed i actually spent some time there this afternoon sorting out the top shed so uh yeah 
And while we're on that subject, I might as well give you the update on my workshop. We're going to be changing the roof. We're going to be replacing it. Uh, when my stepdad built the Lean 2 workshop, he used corrugated transparent plastic sheets. Um, but we've just had nothing but problems with them. They just leak like a sieve. And now they're condensating. And I'm just fed up getting soaked every time I have to slam the front doors shut because obviously with this wet weather the wood swelled up. So you have to really slam the front doors to get them to shut. And that shakes the whole thing and then I get soaked from above. So my stepdad's bought the um, boards, the USB boards for it. So I've just got to get the felt and the um, flashing that we need and then we can redo the whole roof. We're going to um, increase the slope angle as well of the roof. So I think that's part of the problem as well that we didn't put a big enough um, or steep enough slope. So that's all going to be changed. Um, the rear door to the workshop currently doesn't exist. <laughs> It all had to come off, including the wall, to get the big American fridge freezer that Mum bought, um, to get that into the house. We put it all together, and then they decided to sell the two sofas in the conservatory. So we took it all out again. And my stepdad said, instead of putting the damn thing back together, why don't I just make the door bigger and redo that bit of wall? So that's exactly what we're going to do. And I'm, at the moment, my fuse box is just dangling there. It's hanging by a bit of wire at the minute. Uh, power's off. I've disconnected it to the workshop. So power's off. Uh, but I'm going to relocate that fuse box and put it on the brick wall because I'm pissed off um, having to take it down like that. Or unscrew it from the wall. So I think our best bet would be to um, put it on the wall. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put it on the wall above the uh, shop blaster cabinet. I have to extend the cable, but I don't care about that. I can do that. And I'll put new cables in for the lighting, because I'm changing all the lighting anyway. LED lights are going in there. You know, the ones that we took out from my stepdad's workshop are going to go in mine. So, uh, you know, that reminds me, I need to take them lights down. I don't think I'm going to change anything socket-wise. Not unless I need to add any, which isn't an issue. It would be quite easy to do. Yeah. Uh, my stepdad's there with his model railway room conversion on his workshop. He's now basically started to build the model railway in there. Once I've got the workshop sorted, I want to start on the vintage mopeds. I want to get the orange one completely stripped down, all the parts shot blasted in the uh, shot blast cabinet and then repainted. And then it can be reassembled properly. I say properly because the back wheel's not aligned properly in the swing arm. And yes, I think, even though it's MOT exempt, I think when it's done, I will MOT it. For a couple of reasons. One, I'll know it's actually safe to be used on the road. And two, if it passes, that'd be a testament to my own skills, really, wouldn't it? <laughs> you know? I'd be comfortable, probably more comfortable, with um, restoring another one. Like the Camino, which should actually be a bit easier to do. Um, the only thing that's bugging me with the um, 1975... I can never remember if it's a PF or a PC-50. I think it's a PF-50. Um, is the fuel tank. We've tried to fix it a couple of times to stop it leaking. It still leaks. So I think that tank is pretty much past it. Which doesn't leave me with many options, really. I mean, I could fit a different tank. I mean, I guess so long as it's up to the job and it's secure, it will pass an MOT. 
but it's just a case of how am I going to go about that or I just keep trying to find a replacement tank now perhaps I could save it into a search on eBay and you know get notified when one comes up or perhaps find another cheap little uh, matching ped not necessarily the colour if I can get a matching one that I can steal a tank from I could do it that way But uh, I think the easy way is just to fabricate my own tank. Just, I don't know, find something that perhaps is a close enough fit and then try and find a way to fit it to the bike. Or perhaps fit one on the back, I don't know, on the baggage rack. Where there's a will, there's a way. I'll, I'll think of something. Right. Christmas lights. So back in summer I decided I'm not using LED lights this year. I've got nothing against LED Christmas lights. Well one thing, I find them boring. You know years ago when I was growing up you'd have strings of lights without shades. You'd have them with different style of shades. This has got two different styles on because that's all I had. I just threw together what I had left on that one um, you know older sets than that you'd have shades shaped as lanterns bells um, horse drawn carriages I've seen a set that had those they just looked so much more interesting and prettier because of that I've been into two shops, three shops here in town they don't seem to have anything like that, not on their strings of lights anyway it's just various LED strings basically in different colours same style of LED, it's like an LED on the end of a stalk like that um, but just in different colour variations and whatnot. there's no funky shade or anything stuck on top you know, to make it look prettier and make it look different. And I just think that's boring. Maybe our shops are just putting out boring stuff around here. <laughs> I've not really been anywhere else to have a look. I'm only going by what I've found here in town so far. <clears throat> but yeah, other than that, I don't have an issue with any D-lights. I quite like them. It's just this year I want to be different. Usually I sort of do like half and half. I have LEDs and these older sets. But this year I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go purely filament bulb sets. So I hit eBay. And the first set that arrived this week is this lovely little set. I have got the lid to the box. And if you notice, it's got that plug on it. And that is a bayonet plug. And what you would do with that is plug it into a lamp socket because many moons ago um, it wasn't actually that common for average homes like my one to have socket outlets on the walls I guess it was done just to save on cost you know, the rich had them but uh, many homes like this especially the old two up two down homes you probably wouldn't have found a socket on the wall. So you'd have these instead. So you'd plug it into your light fit and you'd either have to take your light bulb out to plug that in so you wouldn't have a light unless you... well, you wouldn't have had a light. Or you could get an adapter that you plugged into your light socket on the ceiling which allowed you to plug one of those in and your light bulb so you could still have a light at night. And I can actually show you that working because Right behind me, I've got a table lamp with a standard bayonet cap lamp holder. So I'm going to plug it in. Put this on here. I'm going to just move the camera. You're a bit further away from me than I thought. Now 
I'm going to nudge it that way because I've just seen some um, very questionable pict pictures on my Facebook that really should not be there. And that's nothing to do with me, it's what some pages have put up as their stories. So I'm guessing the pages have been hacked. Anyway, there we go. It's safe to bring him around this way now. I don't think the photos would have been that visible from that far away, but I'm not going to take the chance. So, literally with these little plugs, just like an ordinary BC light bulb, push in, twist, power it on, a little switch on the brass lamp. And there we go. And it is a fully functioning set. It had one bulb that was blown in here. I've just seen an odd shade laying in here. But I replaced that. So it's now a fully working um, set. Which I'm quite happy with. I've actually got a few more of these plugs dotted about. Obviously I'm not going to leave that on there. Because I've got nothing in the flat to plug it into apart from that. Uh, I have actually got, I've got a white one. Actually, I actually think I've got a couple of white ones somewhere. Uh, let's put that back there and put that down on the floor. Okay. Uh, that was actually £11.50, that set on eBay. Not counting the shipping. Um, and it was bought as untested. I assume untested because of that plug. Um, and I actually bought that like a few days before I got these ones and I got them all from the same seller. And I actually got a set down here from the same seller as well as a separate auction. But these ones I'm scrapping because I don't consider them to be safe and they're actually an incomplete string anyway. Well there's three reasons. One they're an incomplete string. That's the giveaway. And it is meant to be a 40 lamp set, apparently, so I've been reliably informed. There is definitely not 40 lamps here. So it's definitely been cut short. Um, we've got a damaged plastic shade there. And I have noticed, I don't know if I'm going to be able to find one. Yep, this blue one's done it. Look at that. That would be a live wire if it was plugged in, hanging out at the bottom there. It's still connected, but it's the wire insulation is just pulled out the bottom of the lamp holder and exposed a bare wire. So I did test them just out of curiosity and they didn't work anyway. So I just removed all the bulbs. So I got a ton of screwing spare bulbs. And unfortunately, These are going to go in the bin. But it was worth it just for the bulbs, so I'm not too fussed. I just really like the look of this string. I might see if I can find one on eBay. But uh, some of these old lights are not cheap now, especially working ones. Right. So they were a separate auction. From the same seller, I got that and these from. So in total, I've got four strings like this in a job lot, and these ones. Now these ones, I believe, worked right off the bat when I put a plug on. So they work great, and I, I can't really show you at the minute. Um, let's just put them there. I actually quite like those. Um, so there's four of these strings. There's one down here which when it did have all its bulbs in, it didn't work. I think I could have got it to work. Um, then there was another set out of these that didn't work, but I, after playing with it, I just found it was a bulb that wasn't connecting properly. So now I've actually got three working sets. So I do believe two of them actually worked when I plugged them in. They didn't actually come with a plug. I had to put my own plugs on. Um, these, I've got, and 
are complete with shades. I've managed to make these two as complete sets. That one I haven't got a plug on it at the minute because I don't know how I'm going to go about that. Depend it depends where I put the lights because I might do something that they say that you shouldn't do and that's to connect two of these to one plug. I don't see that as an issue. 13 amp plug there's no way that two sets like this are going to pull 13 amps. No way. Um, so, it's not going to be a problem. You shouldn't really connect to a... I think the whole reason they tell us not to connect two appliances onto one plug is because you're going to get some dumbass put like two heaters on one plug. Because um, unfortunately... And I don't mean this offensively, but a lot of people don't think of, you know, the current that's going to be pulled. As long as it works, that's all that matters to them. Um, whereas my brain thinks differently because I've got more knowledge, I guess. <clears throat> you know, I know what would be the limit. And uh, if I could remember the math equations, I could sit here and work it out as well, you know, exactly how many of these strings that I could actually connect on one plug safely. <clears throat> so, yeah, I actually really like these sets. I actually bought them just because I like the shades. And my thinking was, even if they didn't work, I've got spare shades here for some of the other sets I have got and bucket loads of spare bulbs. But yeah, these three do work and that one. That one, if I had more bulbs, I'd see if I could get this one to work as well. But I think I'm about a half a dozen bulbs short. Maybe a bit more than that because I have pinched a few for spares. Uh, yeah, I just do not have any bulbs that will fit the sockets. I've even looked in my box of spare um, bulbs for Christmas lights and no, I've got nothing in there that will fit. So, at least for now, unless I borrowed some bulbs from one of these other sets, um, it's just going to be kept as like a spare string at the moment with some spare bulbs in. Now today, I did actually get two more sets arrive. I bought them on a separate auction. Um, I can't remember though if I bought them as untested or not working. Either way, neither of them work. And I'm going to try and get them to work because these are big 40 lamp sets. I don't know who they're made by. But I'm going to start with this one because I have untangled, well it was untangled till I grabbed them and just bunched them up. Um, so my plan to make life easier is to clear this lounge floor, so I'm probably going to do this tomorrow when I get back from uh, helping my stepdad. And I've got to do some clearing up in the garden, there's so much crap laying about at the minute. Um, then I'm going to lay these out in one long line, or maybe just double it up take all the shades off, so I've got a box up here that I can put the shades in, and that will just make it easier for me to go through each and every lamp holder and lamp, you know, seeing if I can find whether it, it could just be a lamp that's not connecting properly, um, it could just be one that's not pushed in far enough, it could be a wire connection, so uh, we will see. What I usually do is use a tool that a lot of electricians don't like using and that's one of these. I actually find in this case that's probably the easiest way to do it. Because that will tell you which lamp holder has got power. And as soon as you get to the lamp holder that hasn't got power you've found where the issue is. you found the area where the issue is. I'm going to put a different plug on this one as well. That just, it just looks too dirty and you. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to change that one. And the other set I've got, and I will do exactly the same method with this one, is that one. I haven't actually 
actually check the plug on this one, so I don't know if the fuse is good. I checked the fuse on the other one, I put the meter across it and it tested fine. But I didn't actually check this one. It may not even have a fuse in it. No, it's got a fuse, it's got a 13 amp fuse in it. Naughty, that's too big. You should have at least a 3 amp in there. You could probably get away with a 2 amp, but you don't really get 2 amp nowadays. One of my sets has got a 2 amp fuse in it, I can't remember which one it was. It's not any of these ones. Shades have fallen off left, right and centre. That was always an issue with these uh, lights that had the shades on, they always like to fall off. We've got a green bulb in that one with a red shade and a green bulb with a red shade in there. I'm going to have to do something about that. I am watching um, some job lots of light bulbs on eBay. I've actually won one job lot. I'm just... Did I win that one or did that one arrive? No, that one arrived, I think. I'm losing track. But uh, anyway, yeah, I do keep watching some job lots. I missed some today. I dozed off while waiting for the auction to end. And the bulbs would have fitted this string as well, so I was a bit miffed about that. Never mind. I'm going to lay these in here. Just because it's going to be easier to take them through to the bedroom later. Those can go in the uh, keep but not working pile. You know, even spare bulbs for these sets aren't that cheap on eBay either. But I suppose that makes sense because it's not like you can just go out to the shops and buy the bulbs now. Not like you could before LEDs took over. So you're pretty much relying on what people sell on eBay from, you know, scrapping old broken sets of lights and selling the bulbs out of them and those that probably bought up shop stock and whatnot. Who are you looking interested in, Missy? Hmm? She's staring at my Pepsi can. Two cats, and they are both so different to each other. <clears throat> big stretch. She's actually getting quite big now. I don't know, what is she, eight months? She's got to be about eight months now. No, not quite. About six months, I think. I don't know. I can't remember. I can't even remember how long I've had it now. Sometimes I do question if it was a good idea to get two cats. But you know what? I wouldn't change it for anything. I love the pair of them. Even if they do drive me up the wall sometimes. Pardon me. That's it. You attack that shelf. And then she goes and sits on it. <laughs> You know, I bought them that cat tree to play on and whatnot. They just spend their time sleeping on it. They do chase the dangling balls sometimes, but... You know, all the poles that make it up, they are all scratching posts. They don't use them. They use everything else in the flat. They've used my backpack, they've used the chairs, they've used this chair. Um, They'll use random clothes on the floor, I'll use the carpet. Not the thing that's actually intended for them to scratch the claws on. <laughs> it's like cat toys. There's a few I've got dotted around here that they're not interested in, but if I stick an empty box on the floor, they're happy as a pig in the proverbial poop for hours playing with a box. Both of them. So if you ever find a random empty box on my floor, you'll know why. It's because I've put it there for the cats to play with. <clears throat> I 
Right. <sighs> oh yeah. The diecast haul videos will likely slow down now because there's no more car boot sales. Not until next year. Um, which means the diecast guy is not going to get them as frequently as he has been. I think he should be back from his holiday actually. This was been quiet for the past week. I mean, he still gets some, as he was telling me the last time I saw him, he still gets some from um, a friend of his that he does trades with and whatnot. But, uh, you know, the time of year it is, you don't really find that much. There's actually, there's only one car boot I know of around here that runs all year round. And that's because it's on hard standing, it's on concrete. A lot of the other car boots around here are on fields. So by this time of year it's so wet you just, you can't have cars on the fields because they'll just get stuck around here. Apart from Sproston, that's where it is, Sproston in Norwich. That's a um, all year round car boot. What are you looking at up there, Snowy? Are you actually looking at anything in particular, or are you just nosing about? <clears throat> Go sleepy. Oh, actually, very quickly. And what I think show you this, I picked this up earlier. Way overpaid for it. Because I thought I was buying Lego and none of this is actually Lego, but it is stuff I can use. Cool. Some of it not some of it I think is Lego brick, but there's some stuff in here like that that's not Lego. But I did like the look of it. But yeah, I was trying to look at a photo on my phone and I put an offer in. Way overpriced. I paid way too much for it, but never mind. Well, I think I have. I've not really dug deeply in here. There's some broken stuff in here. Isn't there? Well, if I can find something in here I can use, it will make it worth it, but yeah, it's a box of plastic, basically, for a lot of money. Ooh. But, I think I will use some of these windows and whatnot. There is a Lego window here, from the looks of it. Yep. Right, no good. You have to go through that and get rid of the broken stuff and whatnot. And... Don't even know what that come from. That was a good shot. <laughs> yeah, there is some interesting bits in here. I just think I overpaid for it. I don't even know what that is either. Yeah, a few bits of Lego in here. Well, if it works with Lego, I will use it. I'm not fussed, but like I said, it's way too much for what it is. I thought there was actually more here. It's sometimes... It's just not easy looking at things on your phone. Quite a bit of weight to it though. Right, I think... That is it for the video. You like that one more than the green one, don't you? I've got them a couple of those... Um, I don't know what you'd call them, it's like a fluffy worm thing on the end of a stick. 
with a bit of string attached between them. Got one red one, one green one. And uh, she's absolutely loving the red one. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching everyone. Um, I don't I've actually forgotten something, but never mind. Um, you know, if you like the video, then give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And uh, she's actually shredded that in half. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I think. Yeah. Um, I'll, have, I'll leave links in the video description down below here for um, my other two YouTube channels because I've got a gaming channel and a Lego channel which will be coming back in the new year. Um, as well as links to my Discord server and my um, Twitch channel. And if there's any other social medias you'd want me to get then just let me know in the comments and I'll I might even have an account set up with some of them. And I just don't use them because I don't have any use for them. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching everyone. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.